Hello and welcome to Super League Social. I'm Jess Rogers and this is our first episode of Super League Social. In each show, we'll be talking to a different Vitality Netball Super League club to let you at home know how they tick and get to know the players who play for them. So I'm thrilled today to be joined by London Pulse players, Halimat Adio and Ziggy Berger. Hi girls, how are you? Hey, I'm good, thanks. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today on the first show. And for those who don't know at home, London Pulse are a relatively new Vitality Netball Super League team. They joined, they, um, they joined in 2019 and in 2020, they were off to a flying start with three wins from three. <laughs> However, as we know, unfortunately, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the season was cut short. But I'd like to start off, girls, by talking about the start of that season. I mean, Ziggy, you were on top shooting stats out of anyone. I think you had 124 goals from 127 yeah. attempts. That's pretty awesome. How was the beginning of the season for you? Oh, Jess, so it was absolutely amazing. Um, I think the best thing I could have done was come to, sorry, ach, to London Pals. The best thing I could have done was come to London Pals. Um, yeah, Sam Bird is an amazing coach. Um, she really just gave me that little bit of confidence. And when you have a coach who believes in you and who backs you and who's like, Ziggy, you know, you are the best, you can do it. Then obviously, like, your uh, confidence is really boosted and everything. So... For me, it was absolutely amazing. So, yeah, um, I mean, I was lucky. I think I, I, my shots were sinking, uh, but yeah, I think that was just a little bit of confidence knowing I can do it for a change. Good. So, yeah. Well, that's great to hear because you made the transition from Surrey Storm last season to London Post this season. And Hallie, you made a similar yeah. transition. You were at Seven Stars and you came to London Post this season. Mm. And you were off to a real flying start as well. You had 17 turnovers and 10 intercepts oh. in just three That's months. so much. <laughs> how, how was the first, you know, the first few months of the season for you? Um, I mean, obviously, because I was with Sam Birds at Seven Stars and I knew what an amazing coach she was, I was like, I might as well go to London Pulse, carry on with her. I like the way she coaches. And again, what Ziggy was saying, she just like, put it like confidence in the team like the way she um makes the team morale just is all high and everything so I'm happy I went there um I think as well just how lovely the team was and just working with my defensive unit everyone supports each other like like I've got Lindsay with me I've got Michelle and Fumi with me I had Kate so just us all together we like literally that stuck together so it was nice being at London Pulse so you know just how amazing we started off yeah well, it sounds like there was really great bonding between mm. you players and you are a very kind of young squad in comparison to some of the other squads in the Super League. Um, how do you think that affected you as a team? Was it a positive? Um, I think it was just with the fact that we all know we're quite young. So we all had to like level up with everything. So for example, Ziggy's quite young, so she had to lead the attacking unit. We had um, Adine again, who's young. She had to leave the um, centre court. And then as well, me having Lindsay there with me, but both of us are co-captains. So I knew that I had to look up to Lindsay and be like, okay, now I have to also level up in my defensive unit and just support everyone. And I think just that kind of made us all leaders on court. So mm -hmm. that's probably why everyone was like, wow, London Pulse are going on mm -hmm. with a flying start. And yeah, so it's been good. Well, that's great yeah. to hear. And Ziggy, what, what Sorry. do you think? <laughs> um, I agree 100% with Hallie. It's like, it was, yeah, and what's nice about being a young group is we are all still so hungry to learn. I find often yeah. if you have a more mature, experienced, older team, they are so stuck in their ways already. Like, you know, they, they're used to doing it this way, you know, and they can't change. Whereas with us, we are still so young. So we like party. Um, Sam can mold us how she wants. And when you have everyone who are willing to help each other, then, you know, she can like mold us into that ideal, like team that she wants. And that's how it works at every, every position and every player compliments the other player. And I think that was really what was like the true, like hidden, you know, the, like that little X factor that we had. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good insight into how kind of London Pulse also differs from other Super League clubs. So it's really interesting to hear and clearly 
uh, Sam Berg was doing something right with that winning streak to begin with. Some of them were a bit on the edge. My goodness, you uh, you squeezed through on a couple of them, didn't you? How oh, is that all we of them? We were trying to keep was... the fans on their toes. That's what we were trying to do. <laughs> you certainly did that. One or two goals in those two matches. And then you had such a convincing win oh against gosh. Dragons. Um, so yeah, it was a really impressive start. But as we know, lockdown happened and... Unfortunately, the rest of the 2020 season, we don't know what would have been, but you definitely started very strong. But I want to talk about the last few months and lockdown in general. How has it been for you both? Um, Ziggy, you're, you're South African. Did you consider going back home at all? So um, I know that like the average person has taken up things like, I don't know, yoga, meditating, things like that. But for me, I had a job secured as a PE coach for this coming year and everything. And with the danger with lockdown is there was so much time to think that I was like, oh, do I really want to be a PE coach for the rest of my life? Because I did work really hard for three years um, in university to get an economics degree. So um, yeah, so I have an economics degree and I was just like, you know, I don't really want to you know, coach PE for the rest of my life in this winter. I'm not used to coaching in negative temperatures. So um, I ended up getting a job in the city. I'm fortunate enough to be a fund management analyst. Um, it's worth of internship at a big firm. So I'm really, really excited. So all of a sudden, you know, not just netball. Now I have to, you know, dust off the cobwebs in my brain and practice, you know, like read up on all the economics things. So I've really been getting into trading and economics based podcasts and books and everything so Amazing. yeah I've learned, yeah and um i've learned how to become a domesticated goddess um my what i like to call the in-laws that i've been isolating with um auntie bridget is a legend in the kitchen you know she taught me how to clean properly for the first time in my life i can bake and cook things without burning them so yeah um it's been really really productive um in terms of you know learning how to be a full-time housewife hopefully one day and yeah just being able to use my degree in my brains and I've also actually been reading up a lot on books because of the big movement that took place um so yeah um, I've really been trying to teach my educate myself on topics that I wasn't necessarily fully in, uh, informed or aware of and, and yeah so just trying to take that little bit forward as well and you know to um, help educate people back home in South Africa who aren't necessarily as informed in as you know so you know anything that I could help to take you know the whole Black Lives Matter movement forward the little bit that I can do so whether that is just teaching my family and friends back home you know helping a little bit and learning because you know yeah so that's what I've been up to. That's awesome. So you're now yes. going to be working in the city, Ziggy in suits, you know. I'd love to see that. <laughs> Me too. You're going to be like yeah. strutting down, you know, um, bank and going out for, for lunches and, you know, you're going to be awesome. That's great news, Ziggy. Congrats. Thank you very much. I'm very excited. And Hallie, what about you? What have you been up to in lockdown other than netball? So I would say from March, um, I was still at uni. So I studied biomedical science. So I had my exams. So my head was in the books, etc. cetera. Um, but then when I got back home, I had so much more time. So um, I started a little boot camp with my mum and my little sister because my mum was working from home. My sister's not at school. So we'd go to the park every morning, do a little workout before my little sister starts school and my mum starts work. Um, whether it was netball, um, just running about, skipping, could be anything, we did it. Um, as Ziggy was saying, also yoga, I picked that up as well, which um, is another weird thing I didn't think I would do. Um, what else did I do? Um, so me and my older sister, we used to go to a music school and we'd um, learn how to play piano, um, keyboard and guitar. So I have a keyboard at home. So I um, started practicing how to basically, I was trying to reteach myself how to play the keyboard which was nice. Um, I love to bake. I also like to cook. So I've started baking again um, from brownies to apple crumble. Recently made um, a banana bread with some walnuts on the top. It was 10 out of 10. It's really good. Um, I also, which is crazy for me because everyone knows I don't like fitness or any of that. I love running now. So I like doing running. Um, that shout out to Dan, our S&C coach. He made us do so much running in our program that now I actually like doing it. 
um, if it's just a 20 minute run, I could do that like four to five times in the week. Um, normally I wouldn't even do it once. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I like to do that. <laughs> so yeah, I think a lot of netballers will relate and don't like running. So that is, yeah, shout out to Dan for getting you to like running. Um, you've been so busy, yoga, baking, keyboard, boot camp. My gosh, ladies. You oh, are, I forgot you... another one, crocheting as well. Crocheting oh. and knitting. Yeah, started crocheting. doing that. You've been doing the crocheting. So I've um, been crocheting a top. So I started off with a pink and purple one. Now I'm doing like a light blue and dark blue one where it kind of crosses over with the color. So I'm hoping to, that will feature on my Instagram pretty soon. We're glad to have seen all of your virtual fitness online, ladies. So that's also what I want to talk about. <laughs> You've been kept pretty busy by your strength and conditioning coach, it seems. Hallie, how have the kind of fitness sessions and virtual training camps been? Um, I'm not gonna lie, it's been quite intense. Um, so we literally do every day except from Sunday. And um, so when it started, so in March, I was still at uni. So I was like struggling with trying to like do uni, do the virtual camps, wake up on time. But I think um, as it's gone on, I've actually kind of enjoyed it. It's just keeping me active and just, at least I'm staying connected with the girls. So like on Mondays we have um, a strength session and then we also do conditioning in the evening. On Tuesday evening, we have um, a netball session. On Wednesday, we do conditioning or strength session. And then on Thursday, we do conditioning. Friday's a weight session. And then Saturday's another like kind of chill conditioning session, which it seems like a lot, but I think because we're athletes, we're used to it. So like when I'm in camp, I kind of basically do some of that in a whole day so it's just been nice to stay connected with the girls and just like for example if we do like a run we post our pictures of us looking sweaty or we post our times and <laughs> it's nice that we're all going through the same thing um yeah so i've actually kind of i've enjoyed it even though it's been hard i've enjoyed it mm -hmm. definitely yeah and how has your fitness compared to if you were training you know alongside each other um, I would say I think my fitness is definitely like up there. Is it? A hundred percent. Yeah, I think it is. Cause, yeah. I, Cause I'm at uni, I wouldn't normally do as much as I'm doing right now. And Dan's kind of been keeping us going. So I know that when I do get back into the team, I should be hitting it. If I'm not, then there must be a problem. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, um, I think my fitness is definitely like there right now. Well, yeah. That's so great to hear. Um, during lockdown, also the extremely important issue of inequality and the Black Lives Matter movement was magnified by the horrendous incidents that took place in America. Hallie, you very bravely opened up about that on social media and, and put a post out about you know, your thoughts. Can you let us know how you were feeling at that time and what support you've received from the London Pulse family? So I'm gonna be completely honest. When um, everything was going on, I was really emotional. Like I cried a couple times just cause it's not just the George Floyd situation, like things before like Sandra Bland and like other things had been going on. And I know in the UK, everyone says like the UK is not as racist as America, but it still kind of did happen. It does happen in the UK occasionally, not the whole, in, like as much as it does in America, but like when I did pay it out, I was a bit scared because I didn't know whether I was going to get in trouble. I didn't know if I was going to receive black backlash because I am like a public figure. I am an athlete. And just talking to like some of my teammates like Razio Kwashi and Summer Artman, they really helped me. And because I was so emotional, I was literally just typing away. And then I kind of sent it to them to be like, guys, I don't want to seem like this makes no sense. So could you kind of like help me out and make sure this comes out the like perfect. Um, and to be fair, the amount of support I received was quite amazing. And just seeing like other players being able to post thing and things and also like they're going through the same thing I am going through or a lot of us are going through. And I think just a lot of people wanting to educate themselves and like London Pulse were amazing. As soon as I put it out, I received messages from my coaches, from teammates, just basically apologizing that they weren't doing more about it. Um, and I know talking about 
racial issues is a massive thing like we're able to talk about gender inequality we're able to talk about animal rights but and i know talking about racial issues can sometimes be an awkward conversation but it's just another conversation and it shouldn't be as awkward as we make it out to be because we're all trying to educate ourselves and we're all trying to learn something different and new um so i just want to say thank you to london pulse for the support they put something out straight away to make sure that our fans are knowing that we don't accept any racial discrimination at all and just the way it's gone around in the netball world um all the other super leagues have put something out england network put something out like being part of the mpa we have um an equality forum where we're able to talk about stuff and try to actively make a difference in the sporting community so yeah it's been good just the support from the whole netball community yeah that is really amazing to hear and i want to say thank you so much for sharing that now and talking about it so openly because it is a conversation we should be having you know more mm. regularly more we should be you know as you said people feel awkward around it but the more people feel awkward you know the more difficult things become so just thank you for sharing that and it's great to hear how supportive london pulse have been after it and you know other people as well and having the mpa so that's great thank you hallie mm. I'm now going to ask you a few quick fire questions about the rest of the squad. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to say the first name that comes into your head. Okay. So if Hallie, you answer first, then Ziggy straight after or however. Okay. So first question, most competitive player in the squad. Mich Michelle Drain, 100%. 110%. <laughs> <Yeah>. Ziggy? <laughs> Uh, Zara Everett. Fair. And the player who's usually late? Ash Decker. <laughs> Always Ash. Guaranteed Ash. <laughs> <laughs> the, play the player who works the hardest? Oh, Kira. Kira Rothwell. Yeah. I would also probably say Kira, but I mean, like, I think there are quite a few that are really, really hardworking. So I wouldn't necessarily place my name on one, but I'd, yeah, um, Kira, Hallie, Lindsay, Zara. Fair. Good. <laughs> Who is the funniest player? Oh, there's so many. Like, Ziggy, we've got a Dean, we've got Kate, there's, yeah, we've got Kate. Olivia. <laughs> there's so many of them. <laughs> That's why we're always laughing at training. <laughs> Literally, so many yeah, I'd say the same. There, there are too many characters and we all have the weirdest. It's like, it's like a really dysfunctional family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds like a good group to be around. Who is the player you wouldn't want to be up against? Hey, Hallie. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, I would say if I'm an attacker, it would be Fumi. If yeah. I was, um, well, I am a defender, it will be Ziggy. Yeah. Well, that is all on your London Pulse team. We are now going to move on to the all-star section. So oh. earlier this week on social media, we put out a post with several different VNSL 2020 squad players on. So we've got each position, goalkeeper to goal shooter, and we've got six different options of players in there. We ask people to create their all-star team from this list, but you can only choose one player per team. So you can't have two players from Wasps and you can't have two players from Pulse, which means you two who are on the list are not allowed to play together. So <laughs> we have had a couple of, we've had a lot of responses, but I'm going to pull out a couple here, okay? And I'm going to read them out. And then I want to know what you think of these and then tell me what your all-star team is from this list, okay? So I'm going to start on Twitter from Jamie Conway Baker, who has put in goalkeeper, Ebony Usoro Brown, in goal defence, Joe Tripp, in wing defence, Laura Malcolm, in centre, Mickey Austin, in wing attack, Liana Leota, in goal attack, Ella Clark, and in goal shooter, Ziggy Berger. Ziggy, <laughs> how would you feel about being in that shooting circle with Ella Clark? Um, it's something I've never thought of in my life, but it's definitely something I could see happening. Um, well, I think it could be fun having two tools in a circle, like chucking that ball just above where, uh, where keepers can't reach their arms. 
Um, yeah, I think that could be really fun. Ella and I get on quite well, I, I like to think. So, you know, I think, I think it would be a fun circle. I think really it would be good. a fun circle. Yeah. And what yeah, do you think she, about that lineup? I think that's a pretty decent lineup. I mean, uh, you said Leona Leota on a wing, on a wing attack, right? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that would be so amazing to be able to play with her. Like she she can feed from like anywhere on court. So I mean, it would just have to be wakey wakey, eyes up, heads up. Um, I think that would be pretty sick. I'd love it. Great. And we've got another one before we jump into who your all star teams would be. This one's also on Twitter from Fiona Moore McGrath. And uh, in goalkeeper, we've got Hallie Matt Adio. And then we've got Joe Tripp again at goal defence. We've got Imogen Allison at wing defence. We've got Claire Maxwell in centre. We've got Liana Leota again, very popular in wing attack. And we've got at goal attack, Sophie Drakeford Lewis. And in goal shooter, Rachel Dunn. Hallie, how would you feel about playing in that defensive circle with Joe Tripp? Um, great. I know that Jo Tripp's an amazing player. She likes to go for ball and she's quite aggressive as well on the ball. So it'll be nice to know that I've got another dominant defender in there. That whole defensive unit as well will definitely be getting those high balls. So it would be nice. I think the shooters as well are really good. Like Sophie DL, she's very speedy. Rachel Dunn, she's really quite clever. And then Liana Leota, she's just top notch. So it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to play yeah. against that defensive end. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> so I'm going to hand over to you then. Hallie, who would your all-star team be from that list? Okay, so I wrote mine down. I have like so many options, but I had to just, yeah. So <laughs> I would have my goalkeeper as Razio Koshi, just because mm -hmm. of her elevation and her speed. Um, I was stuck in between the, um, what's it called, the goal defenders. So there's Fran Williams, who is just a really good, good goal defender. And we've also got Latanya Wilson, but I've never seen her play at goal defence, so I don't really know what she's like at goal D. We've got Emma Allison, who can go for those over pocket balls. Um, okay, so we can't have two from the same team, can we? No. Oh, no. I, I didn't read that part so nicely. So my whole team is is like, I've got to rethink Ooh. my whole team now. <laughs> who who oh is the gosh. other centre? Who's the centre? Sorry. So you've got Jade Clark, Wasps, O'Hanlon, Thunder, Maxwell, Sirens, Sasha Corbin, Mavericks, Mickey Austin, Storm, and Shaw, Lightning. So I can't have Mavericks or Wasps again. So I'm going to go with Claire Brownie. I mm -hmm. just think the way she's she's got a defensive brain and she's really good at attack, so that would be good. Um, or I'm going to go with Leota, wing attack, 100%. Yeah. She's just amazing. She's Goal attacks, good. who do we have? We've got, oh, we've got... Um, we've got no, that's fine. <laughs> we've got Kadeen Corbin, uh, Mavericks, so you can't have her. We've got Baker yeah. at Wasps, you can't have her. Reed from Stars, not allowed. We've already got Liana Leota from Stars. Drakeford Lewis from Team Bath. Robinson, Dragons, and Ella Clark, Lightning. Mm, I would go SDL, just because she's yeah. so speedy and she's got really high shooting stats and she's quite clever. And her defence, when she's on defence, she's good as well. And then um, my goal shooter would be Ziggy Berger. Yeah, oh, in that's there. nice. Girl, you yeah, good. I expecting that. <laughs> You're a good shooter. What are you talking about? I definitely need oh, my team. <laughs> Your only top shooting stats from the from the season. So exactly. you know. Exactly. No <laughs> I was not then. expecting that at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're so oh. touched. Look at that. Um Ziggy, then over to you. You have you said you haven't done this right, but that's fine. We'll go with it. Who who would you would... start a goalkeeper? Okay, so um, may I please move one position around? Maybe. Go for it. Thank you. Okay, so this is how I would love my team to be. Razzie in the back, Hallie out in front of her, with Ooh, Imogen in the nice. middle, Caroline O'Hanlon in the centre, Liana Leota on wing attack. Then I would like to have, um, what's it called? Uh, Oh, Ooh. 
I'll put Ella Clark out a go. I don't have a lightning yet. With Ooh, I can put Rachel Dunn in. I don't have a wasp player. Ooh, you can. Nice. Clark. That's a sick Dunn. lineup. Wow, that's so good. I like that too. I would love it. And I would like to be manager, not coach. I would like to be manager of that too. <laughs> that's allowed, I think. Yeah. Thank in this you. dream scenario. I'll let yeah. that happen. I that's mean, a sick lineup. Terrible. I'm happy with that. On music, but. <laughs> Um, right, so that brings us to an end, ladies. I want to say a huge thanks to you, Hallie and Ziggy, for joining us on the first ever episode of Super League Social. Um, London Pulse, I'd like to say, are hosting virtual netball sessions. If you want your netball fix, just head to their website, londonpulsenetball.club. And uh, we will be back very soon talking to another Super League club. To join the conversation, use hashtag Super League Social and follow the VNSL Vitality Netball Super League on social media to at Netball SL. So thanks for talking ladies and uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye.